Hello and welcome. It's uh, Monday in Holy Week. My apologies for uh, getting on late. A little technical difficulties. Uh, we're uh, having a service of midday prayer today. and We'll be doing this each day throughout this week, this Holy Week. Uh, if you have a book of alternative services, it's on page 56, and I certainly invite you to follow along. Let's begin with a, a moment of silence as we prepare ourselves for worship. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And we're going to say Psalm 36, verses 5 through 11. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your, your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are, are true of heart. Let not the foot of the proud come near me, nor the hand of the wicked push me aside. Let us pray. God of justice and mercy, open the eyes of sinners that they may see the light of your truth. Know the power of your love and share in the bounty of your heavenly table. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And our reading is from John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. Then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume made from the essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, that perfume was worth a year's wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor. He was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some for himself. Jesus replied, Leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. When all the people heard of Jesus' arrival, they flocked to see him and also to see Lazarus, the man Jesus had raised from the dead. Then the leading priest decided to kill Lazarus too, for it was because of him that many of the people had deserted them and believed in Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I tried to envision myself being in this the situation at, at the home of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. And what I envisioned was a, a real party, lots of joy. Lazarus had been raised from death by Jesus just a short while prior to this. This has come around, and one could imagine the festivities, the, the rejoicing that, that Jesus, the Savior, is there, that, that he has saved Lazarus, the family is intact. And so... One can imagine there's, there's much merrymaking to be done. The wine is pouring, the food is being eaten, there's laughter and joy. And in the midst of this, there's Mary. And she takes this oil, oil that is, that, that is used for, uh, for uh, burials, and she goes and she anoints Jesus' feet and wipes them with her hair. I can imagine that would be a bit of a downer for the party. I mean, 
One, the, to use the term, Mary seems to be a bit of a buzzkill here. They're all rejoicing. Of course, Mary gets it. She, perhaps more than anyone else, has actually listened to Jesus and heard him. And she knows what this week will bring about for him. And so she is honest. And she's at risk of recognizing, acknowledging what Jesus is about to do. No one else wants to. No one else has heard. Perhaps they've deliberately not heard. But she has quite deliberately heard and acted on it. I think sometimes we, we can be too quick to want to rejoice at things and forget that sometimes things are hard. Life is, is tough. And I think most of us are very much aware of that uh, at this particular time in our history, in our lives. And so perhaps it is appropriate that we begin Holy Week uh, with Mary's honesty, her desire to show her love and respect for Jesus and what he's about to go through. And perhaps we too can share that love with those we know and with those we don't know in, in being honest about the fears that we have in being honest and open about our concerns, our worries, our pains, the isolation. Reach out to those around. Reach out with the love of Mary, the love she showed for Jesus. Show that love for Jesus to others around you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> and in our prayers this morning, we hold up before you, Lord, this world of yours. We pray for all people around this world, especially in the midst of this. We pray for the leaders of the nations that they will respond with compassion, with justice. We pray most especially at this time for those on the front lines, for our physicians, our nurses, those who are, have the care of hospitals, cleaners, orderlies. We pray, Lord, for your presence with them, your guidance, your wisdom, and your protection. We pray for the sick, for the hungry, for the homeless, for those who are alone, those who are in fear. And at this time, I invite you in a moment of silence to offer up your own prayers for those who are particularly close to you, those who have asked you to pray for them. Gracious God, we ask that you hear our prayers. We ask that you grant them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son. Amen. We pray the collect for this Monday and Holy Week. Almighty God, whose Son was crucified yet entered into glory, may we, walking in the way of the cross, find that it is for us the way of life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me in this time of prayer. I invite you back again tomorrow at noon when... Father Robert Porter will be leading us in this time of prayer. And join us every day uh, this week at noon.